Good afternoon, judges, facilitators, and my fellow delegates. My name is Ryan Harris, and I'm a member of the UCLA team, which stands for Using Critical Linguistic Abilities. I would like to introduce you to the rest of my dynamic team. We've done very well today. Um, Ms. Amber Meyer, Ms. Courtney Dyer, Ms. Takia Quabner, and Mr. James Stevens. We are strong supporters of the U.S.'s use of meeting military, excuse me, military force to spend, spread, de <laughs> to spread democracy in foreign countries. My three teammates will be presenting three different contentions that will justify our support in the spread of democracy. First, we shall show you why it is needed to ensure national and international security. Because if foreign countries do not have the help of the most powerful country in the world, only pain, suffering, and hostility can occur. Secondly, as you open both your ears and your minds, we will also explain to you why it is the United States' responsibility to ensure economical stability, doing their duty as the big brother of the world. Lastly, we shall further prove to you why military forces are necessary because military is vital in enforcing new policies for the good of the citizens. We have the forces to keep troublemakers in check and spread liberal democratic principles throughout the world, and we shouldn't be afraid to use them. Sometimes you have to do what you gotta do to get things done. So please sit, please relax, and prepare as my team answers any questions, opens all minds, and changes all views concerning the justability of used armed forces as a way of spreading democracy. Before I start, I would like to take a moment of silence for these four people. Staff Sergeant Carl Fuller, 44 years old. Sergeant John Thomas, 33 years old. Sergeant James Kinslow, 35. And Specialist Jacques Brunson, 30 years old. These Four soldiers were recently killed in Iraq, according to the publication of Atlantic Journal. Good afternoon, judges, ladies, gentlemen, and of course, my esteemed colleagues. My name is Jessica Lloyd. Today, we, the Free Spirited Eagles, on behalf of not only those four great <coughs> souls, but the nearly 2,000 brothers and sisters that were taken away from us in Iraq to an unjustified cause. Here to prove to you the U.S. military forces to spread democracy in foreign countries should not and will not be justified. My opponents may try to sway you, trick you with their fa fantasies and fairy tales. My teammates and I will stress these points in this debate today. My first point is, U.S. only uses its military to intervene with foreign countries when such actions will be, be financial or political gain for this nation. Thus, this country has no justification for intervening with foreign countries for any purpose via any method, period. Second, U.S. military forces to not help but imperialize, colonize, and mandate other nations. This, thus, it has no justification to use its military force to spread democracy. Third, it's unjustified to the citizens of this nation when the government puts our troops and their families in potentially grave danger for selfish causes. And last, my facilitator's brother was called away just last week from his own birthday party to arrange funeral details because the four U.S. soldiers were mentioned earlier were blown to pieces in Iraq by a suicide bombing. Imagine their families and daughters and sons. This is the direct result of the U.S. being the bully in the playground we call Earth. No, we believe in the red, white, and blue. We believe hot dogs, baseballs, and sweet hot apple pies. However, that does not justify the U.S. for policing the world in any way. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to start off my speech with a quote from the famous John Lennon. I'm sure you all are aware of his hit song, Imagine. The lyrics go, imagine all the people living a life in peace. Well, today I would like to change those lyrics to imagine all the countries fighting, 
trading easily and freely. My second contention in the justification for the United States Armed Forces going into different countries to spread democracy is that the United States needs to maintain and ensure an economic stability throughout the nation and the world. My, I will give you three contingents today. My first contingent, the spread of democracy will improve trade. Trade embargoes are put on countries such as Cuba because of their oppressive leaders like Fidel Castro. We no longer can trade with Cuba right now or it's restrained because of Castro. This not only affects the United States increasing prices in our, our goods, but also affects the people of Cuba who really don't want Fidel Castro in power anymore. So having countries that have unfair governments is not only affecting the United States, but it's affecting every country and every country the United States trades with. The United States is the mother of economic stability. Her children include Taiwan, Indonesia, the Republic of Korea, Japan, and the entire European Union. They are all <coughs> affected by this domino effect of economic instability. My second contention is that government and democratically elected officials would decrease the chance of corruption. Now, Iraq, pretty poor country, right? How did Saddam Hussein get nine palaces, I believe? Because the person who's a treasurer for all their taxes they pay is Saddam's best friend, and the money goes into his pockets and the pockets of their friends. If a democratically elected official is put into power to do the national treasury, then this will decrease the chance of corruption. Corruption does happen in democratic societies, but not to the extent that it does occur in undemocratic societies. My third and last contention, this will decrease immigration in the United States. Immigration is great, don't get me wrong, but it's putting a burden on the United States economy. And not only is it putting a burden, but people don't want to relocate to other countries. They relocate because they're being oppressed in their country. Alien Gonzalez and his mother did not want to travel in life vests in treacherous waters to get to Florida for fun. They went because it was that or death. <laughs> they had no choice. If democracy was instated in different countries, people would be happier. This would decrease immigration. For my three contingents that are basically unarguable, it is imperative that you vote in the affirmation of this resolution because any other vote would just be unjustified. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your undivided attention so far. My name is Vincent Fan, and I will be the final speaker for the negative side. <coughs> to begin with, I would like to point out that my opponent had no idea what they're spreading. Way in the beginning of this debate, they told me that they think we're spreading our system of government. But then they also told me that we're spreading the system of democracy with majority rules. That is not our system of government. We have a two-third system in which you can only pass something if it's over two-thirds. So that means if you have one third plus one, the minority can block the majority. That is not what they're saying. Second of all, they say that the international security will be promoted via spreading democracy. How do we secure someone? How do we protect someone by bombing them? Oh, we want to help you, just let me kill you first, and then we'll protect you <laughs> after you die. So see, if there's one thing we're, we're installing, that is stability. Stability through fear. Stability through not their admiration to our system, but their hatred. But they don't dare to step up to us. If there's one thing they say that's right, and that is we are the big brother of this world. But not a big brother in the sense of a loving one, but a sense of an Orwellian one, where he's in total control of everything. Okay? And then they try to pass that democracy is a great thing, which I agree. Democracy is a wonderful thing. But we need to take into consideration the historical background and the culture of every single nation we're spreading democracy to before we think whether or not the democracy is good for them. Because as you see, ladies and gentlemen, democracy can only be dependent on education. Without education, democracy is no more than a dictatorship in disguise, a sugar-coated tyranny. And then let me give you some examples. Hitler. Castro, hey, they're all democratically elected. And this new president in Iraq that they somehow freely chose, but only after two weeks of hot negotiation with the US did we tell them who they can pick for their presidential candidate. Is that democracy? I don't think so. We're not. See, it's easy to draw some plans on a paper and say, this will work. We're spreading democracy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying to those kind of plans. We're not honoring democracy. We're not honoring choice. We did not give those people in Vietnam who boast North and South supported Ho Chi Minh. We did not ask you, who do you want to choose for your government? We just went in and said, our system works for us. It will work for you because we don't think communism will work. And we will ensure 
that your covenant, that your idea, doesn't play any role because we are better than you. What we're saying is, what we're telling that sweet lady that stands there holding that torch of liberty and freedom is, we don't care. We no longer agree with you, and we don't really care if that torch keep on lighting. She's weeping, ladies and gentlemen. She's crying. Because people in Rwanda are suffering. People in Somalia are being killed. The, the Kenyan ex exile government are begging for our help, and we just turn our back. Ladies, gentlemen, judges, our opposing, I thank you for your time today. I would first like to start off with saying the spread of democracy by means of military force is justified. And our opposition has yet to prove that. Our opposition tries to point out, tries to paint a picture of our military as being some mindless killing machines that just run into houses of innocent citizens and point guns at their head yelling, democracy or die. <laughs> This is not what we are saying. We are simply there as peacekeepers and for protection only. We only attack those who attack us or threaten the peace. It's kind of like when you were a kid. You didn't want to take that cough syrup because you thought it was nasty when you were sick. But yet it was good for you. So your mom crammed it down your throat anyway. That's exactly what the U.S. is for. Democracy is good for the people. And some people think that it's not, so therefore they oppose. So we are only there as protection to take out those few people. Our opposition tried to use the fact of Hitler against us. Hitler, yes, was elected through a democratic process. But his actions while in office were of his own free will. Let me ask you this. If it was the fault of the democratic process, did the Jews vote democratically to be killed? They mention the war in Iraq. They say that we are spreading democracy and for, they, they said that we are there spreading democracy and uh, for our own economic purposes. If I remember correctly, we went to Iraq first to find weapons of mass destruction. And it just so happened while we were there, we had to remove Saddam Hussein from power. And therefore at that time, their full government collapsed. So at that point, we offered democracy as a form of new government, which they took to. And also, they stated in cross-examination, oh, excuse me, no, not in cross-examination, in their presentation that Iraq, that they, one of their main productions of uh, their economic staple was oil. And then they said again in cross-examination that by oil being bought from them by the United States, it was stimulating their economy. So therefore, derived from reasoning, wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that be saying that we are helping them, which they stated we are not? Also, oh, just to let you know, um, the two-thirds th two system that you brought up, uh, that's only used in the House of Representatives. And also, all these points have just danced around the resolution. They have not proven the point that states why we should not spread democratic, democratic process by military means. So not only have we presented a strong argument to you today, but we have defeated every roundabout point that they have brought up. So, oh, is my time is up?